Hello and welcome. Very good morning to all of you. Myself, dietitian Shweta Heman Chikle, and I'm working with Apollo Spectra Hospitals Pune as a dietitian. And I've completed my MSc Dietetics. I am a certified diabetic educator, as well as I have done my uh, lifestyle management course from American College of Medical Sciences. And uh, I am also doing uh, bachelor remedies currently. So today's topic is uh, we will talk about role of nutrition in uh, prevention of diseases. As we all know nowadays, uh, in this fast-paced life, it is very difficult to maintain to optimum health and nutrition. And uh, we seldom realize and think about how healthy the diet that we are eating is or it is it not. Okay, uh, I would like to give you a very small example. Like suppose if you are running a vehicle and if it it runs on petrol, but if you try to put diesel in the petrol, it is not going to work. It might go on like that for some time, but eventually it will break down. So that is why it is very important. Think your body like a machine, like a vehicle, and you have to run this vehicle on a perfect nutrient or a perfect fuel. So the nutrients that we put in, the food that we eat, is going to help us to run this machine. And this machine is the only thing which is going to be there with us till the last breath. So you have to be very careful and take good care of your health. And this is really going to help us. There are very small things. Our kitchen is full of nutrients. And if we really try and understand, we try to educate ourselves with nutrition knowledge. It will help you to understand how you can keep up with your health, optimum health, along with your family's health. Okay. So we will discuss about uh, certain nutrients. Basically, I'll try and explain you what is a balanced diet. A balanced diet is a diet which is going to provide us with all kind of nutrients in adequate amounts and uh, at adequate timings. Okay, so which will help us to perform optimum in our profession, in our personal life, as well as on emotional health, well-being, and it will help us to manage stress. So we seldom think twice before putting anything in the mouth. Nowadays, what happens is all women are also working. Initially, there used to be joint families and we were not really thinking because that was not required. The food that was prepared was prepared in the kitchen and whatever was prepared in the kitchen was served and everybody in the house used to sit and have it together. So nowadays, due to nuclear families, this uh, method or this uh, what we can say parampara is nowadays uh, not there in practice. And that is why most of us are suffering a lot, not only on health level, but also on emotional levels. So what I'm trying to put forth is that if we eat healthy, this will not only help us to keep healthy body, but it will also help us to uh, achieve a connection with our psychological stress or whatever behavioral management that is also proven now in so many studies. Okay. So there are very simple tricks. We just need to understand that there are certain macronutrients and micro, uh, micronutrients which the food which we eat go, provides us with. Okay. So there are certain nutrients like carbohydrates, fats and proteins. These are macronutrients which means these are uh, provided in abundance in the diet and uh, the role of these nutrients is also big in the health. Okay. And there are certain micronutrients like vitamins, minerals. So these are uh, uh, nutrients which will, which we require in very small amounts. At the same time, the um, function of this food is also very minute but very very important. Okay, and that is why these micronutrients are also very very important in the diet. Okay, so uh, what it does is that first we will see that nowadays uh, India is on the verge of becoming diabetic as well as heart. Uh, you know, what do you say? Capitals. So what we need to understand is. If we try and maintain a healthy balanced diet, uh, if we try to observe and understand what we eat, we will be able to maintain a very healthy weight. Okay. So once you understand this uh, input and output cycle, as in if you eat healthy, you will be able to maintain a healthy weight, healthy uh, body mass index, healthy blood sugar levels, healthy cholesterol levels, and you will be able to maintain your blood pressure. The same way it is, it will help us to prevent either or prolong the occurrence of certain ailments okay now we all understand that diabetes cholesterol blood pressure runs in families it is a hereditary trait but at the same time it is also important to understand that 20 percent of it is hereditary any occurrence any occurrence of any disease is just 20 percent of heredity rest of the 80 percent is in our hand so if we maintain a healthy lifestyle if we eat healthy food 
uh, then we will be able to prolong the occurrence of these diseases. So for that, the most important thing is to maintain a healthy weight. To see to it that your BMI, that is your body mass index, is below 23 or in between 23 to 25. So that is a healthy body mass index. Okay. Only body mass index is not the indicator. Now along with that, you have to also keep checking your blood levels. Yearly blood checkups are also important to see to it and to find out. These can be very good screening tools. So we have to understand that this is also important. After a certain age, say like age 45 or 40, it is important to keep checking your blood levels and values also. So these micronutrients, as we spoke about carbohydrates, proteins and fats, we will discuss all these things uh, one by one but not in much detail. Along with that, I would also like to mention that water is also one of the most important nutrients. It is not valued as much, but it is very, very important and fiber. Okay. So because fiber is uh, many a times overlooked, uh, people say that we don't eat salads and we don't eat fruits, but that is the crux of the whole thing. I feel because, uh, you know, in case if you are not uh, in a position to cut salads or cut fruits and eat every day, at least try and make it a habit that you have it twice a week or thrice a week. These way small, small changes that you make in the healthy uh, diet, in your diet will help you to, you know, achieve the goal at least if not 100%, 50%, 60% you can achieve your goals. And this is how you will be able to uh, maintain that. Okay. So, uh, and if you start eating like this in the family, your children will also try to uh, follow you. Okay. Most of the time children just follow their parents. And they will eat whatever they get used to all these family patterns. So it is very important to start doing this at family level. All right. So along with that, uh, I would just like to mention that uh, we have to take care uh, of the fiber intake, uh, wherein fiber will not only help us maintain weight, it will help us to maintain diabetic levels, sugar levels. It will help us to keep uh, your cholesterol levels in control. At the same time, it is going to help you to develop good healthy bacteria. Now, good healthy bacteria means what? There are certain microbacteria which uh, thrive on the food that we eat. Okay, now this food that we eat after digestion is being uh, fermented by the microbacteria in the large colon, okay, the large intestine. Now, if we provide good enough uh, fiber or roughage in the diet, it will help us to develop healthy colonies. Now, there are various studies which have shown that uh, these healthy bacteria, if uh, we develop healthy colonies, then this will not only help us to be um, give good digestive digestion, it will help us to keep the weight in control. At the same time, it is going to help us develop good thoughts. So there is a very strong connection between your gut and your brain, which is called as the gut brain axis. Okay. So this will not only help us uh, that, but it will also help us to pro prevent acidity, constipation problems. It will help us prevent bloating problems. So all these things will be taken care of automatically with just increasing, just say about one bowl of salad or maybe two fruits in the diet. A lot of issues will be taken care of. Along with that, uh, I would like to mention that healthy fat. There is a fat nowadays that we should be going for olive oil and we should be taking all these uh, rich and um, exotic oils in the diet. <coughs> Excuse me. But I think that is not ne necessary. We should try and focus more on locally grown seasonal foods so that what happens is the climate in which you are living, that uh, food which is grown in that climate will help a better absorption in the body. Okay. So that is a seasonal food seasonal uh, and locally grown food is much much important so in india if we see we will be able to find oil made with sesame mustard groundnut uh, sunflower safflower rice bran so that much is fine and also that you should be consuming filtered oil okay and not refined oils try and avoid refined oil as much as possible because these are dead oils it has nothing but only calories there are no other nutrients in that oil so it is very important to have filtered or cold pressed oils. Okay. One more thing is that you should be consuming good amount of uh, green leafy vegetables in the diet. Now there is one important, I would like to just uh, talk about this thing that uh, they say that every food represents one organ in the body. So if it is green leafy vegetables, if I say, then it is very important for our blood stream. Okay, so because uh, foliage is provided with uh, green leafy vegetables, so it helps us increase your folic acid in the uh, blood levels. 
then if you have carrot carrot when you cut it looks like your eye it looks like a picture of an eye so it has good amount of beta carotene retinol so it helps in the uh, maintaining healthy eyes similarly if you have good amount of walnuts in the diet suppose walnut looks like your brain okay so it represents that it provides you with good fatty acids which uh, which is healthy for good cognitive development okay now uh, again if we say about uh, tomatoes tomatoes are good for your heart that is what they say okay now there are so many micronutrients which are provided with each and every food each micronutrient will have some or the other role to play in your prevention of your health now good uh, healthy diet not only does help us to prevent diseases but in day to day life it will help us to uh, you know optimize or improve your stamina it will help focus uh, work focus is improved your sleep pattern is if it is disturbed then it will help you to achieve and maintain good sound sleep sleep is also one of the important factors in our day to day uh, health uh, we we should say okay health issues because inadequate sleep leads to acidity also a lot of digestive issues and which chronic problems when uh, it goes on like that for years together it might develop into chronic issues like irritable bowel syndrome or uh, maybe chronic hyperacidity or something like that so in order to prevent that if we take take a step before right now we will be able to uh, avoid these hazards from happening okay so that is one important thing now again i would like to emphasize more on uh, exercise also at the same time because uh, not only diet but exercise also help us to uh, digest the food that we eat at the same time it is going to help us to uh, you know keep your brain healthy okay so it develops good amount of uh, it helps secretion of healthy uh, hormones in the brain and then that is how it is going to help us to keep healthy positive okay uh, now i would just like to uh, tell you that we are what we eat we all know that so what you put in if you eat right the medicine is of no use and our kitchen is a very good uh, we can say the best doctor in the house so if you learn all these tricks and uh, things in tricks in your li day to day life it is going to help you to achieve good health so now let us discuss in detail how fats are going to help us in preventing or maintaining good health there are various types of fatty acids which we which are provided by the oils that we consume okay and there are visible fat as well as invisible fat in the diet now visible fat means the fat which we use for cooking or the fat which we apply on our food like say chapatis or butter that we use or white butter that we make at home and we use or ghee okay clarified butter so what these what is the role of this fat basically fat provides us insulation it protects our organs uh, it creates an outer layer around the organs and it protects it from uh, shocks okay that is one function but apart from that our brain is mostly made up of fat the brain tissue is basically made up of fatty acid so it is very very important for us to consume good amount of fat now there is a, a misconception or we can say misunderstanding that cholesterol rich foods that we eat from outside uh, help us increase uh, or rather it increases the cholesterol in the diet okay in the blood now that also might be true but not 100% i would say because even if you don't eat fat or even if you don't eat cholesterol rich foods cholesterol any which is will be uh, produced in the body okay it is produced in the liver in every human beings or every living organisms body say if suppose uh, the food that we eat will not provide us cholesterol or fat then tell me uh, how we, we should think about this thing that how the cows or buffaloes which are fed on just grass or hay how can they provide with uh, milk rich in fat or cholesterol okay so this is a thing or a point to ponder upon so we must understand that this is the physiological process or the metabolic process which goes on inside the body and hence cholesterol or fat will be produced in the body in which ways but where is the line we should draw is that suppose if somebody's uh, blood profile shows that uh, he has he or she has high cholesterol values high triglyceride values uh, then there is some problem in the metabolism as in the cholesterol is produced which is produced in the body is produced in high amount and that does not only depend on your cholesterol or fat intake it very much depends on your carbohydrate intake as well okay so the simple carbohydrates in the diet will lead to high triglycerides high cholesterol in the blood values 
also the sample which we have to give is basically to be given fasting so many times it happens that people don't do enough fasting before giving the blood sample so that can also give false readings okay so that we have to keep in uh, mind also now there are certain uh, i'll talk about the omega 3 fatty acids omega 6 and mofa so omega 3 fatty acid is the fatty acid which is very important for us omega 6 is the ones which actually helps develop trans fatty acids and which is not good for our heart not good for the health okay so uh, that is one thing and mofa means mono unsaturated fatty acids so these fatty acids are helpful uh, or we, we can say these are healthy okay so we should be consuming these fatty acids now fatty acids present in the ghee are different these are saturated fats it is very simple to understand any fat which solidifies at room temperature is basically uh, fat which is consume uh, which is made up of cholesterol which has cholesterol in the uh, in it okay every fatty acid or every fat that we consume will have various levels and amounts of fatty acids present in it okay so we, our body requires all these fatty acids these are all essential so that is the reason why you should keep switching or keep rotating the oils which we use for cooking every month okay that is actually the healthy way it should be now if we consume suppose if somebody's triglyceride is high then we have to sit and take a follow-up of the patient try to understand the diet and everything and then we will try and uh, taper down certain things like simple carbohydrates or uh, fructose uh, syrup in the diet is high in any form like bakery products or uh, maida, sago or deep fried products or any sweets so these things have to be cut down in the diet because these will lead to high triglycerides and not the fatty intake as such okay so the dietitian will know all these things so you have to give in detail uh, history of your diet to the dietitian so that she can taper down things accordingly for you okay now the cholesterol is high suppose if the cholesterol is high and the triglyceride is high then the patient is obviously prone to develop any heart ailment in future so to prevent that your hdl cholesterol needs to be high now how the hdl will increase with exercise with good amount of green leafy vegetables with good amount of sprouts in the diet and fiber in the diet so this will help basically shia seeds uh, sabja or flax seeds uh, seeds which are rich in omega-3 fatty acids will help us to improve the amount of or to increase HDL cholesterol okay and this is seen I see this in all my patients so it is very important to uh, visit a dietitian whenever you see these abnormalities in your blood levels okay it is very much achievable only with diet also okay no need to start with medications immediately so diet will be the first line uh, protocol and then if it is not controlled after three months with the diet then we can definitely uh, rely on the medicines and the doctors okay now uh, what i was talking about is that fat after fat what the most important thing is water now why i wanted to focus more on water was that uh, when it starts see when the heat starts increasing when we see in summer we have a lot of patients coming in with kidney uh, stones now why this happens is because in summers we do we have to sweat a lot the everybody's body will sweat a lot to maintain the temperature of the body to cope up with the heat outside okay now in that process not only water but also the minerals and micronutrients are lost through sweat so we have to replenish ourselves continuously during summers at the same time uh, patients uh, who have tendency of developing stones or who have a tendency of high uric acid levels they will see all these levels going up high in summers because of excess of sweating so for this it is very very important that with change in climate you try and change the food intake you try and change the water intake because this will help you to prevent from any occurrences or any episodes of stones or high uric acid hyperuricemia is high uric acid which will lead to deposition of the uric acids on small joints or maybe the weight bearing joints first the toe big toe or the ankle joint okay so this will help us to prevent all these uh, long term effects so it is very important to understand your body's tendencies and accordingly make changes so that you can this will help you from uh, any major hazards of these things or the season change or maybe the excess intake of any food okay similarly uh, iron intake in uh, the women in india is very low okay so we see come across uh, so many uh, ladies and uh, teenage girls uh, just out of uh, ignorance maybe or lack of knowledge we don't think twice before 
popping up anything uh, just popping up pills is not necessary is not going to help cure the solution okay that is not the solution slight and small changes again continuous changes because nutrition is a continuous process so it's not that you it's not going to work like a medicine that you pop a pill and tomorrow you will see the results after changing the diet so you have to be patient you have to get into a habit of eating those things on a regular basis only then you will see the results maybe after a month or two months or three months and you should be in regular touch with your dietitian to understand what changes this change in the diet has made in your lifestyle or what is the outcome of all these things okay so nowadays we see that people think uh, it's a myth actually that people think if we don't consume non vegetarian food we will end up having iron deficiency anemia or we will have uh, anemia for that matter but it's not like that uh, even vegetarian food will also give you good amount of iron only thing is that you have to eat mindfully and try to so that is if that's your problem that you always maintain low levels of hemoglobin please see a dietitian and she will tell you that what all needs to be changed in the diet okay so suppose if you consume good amount of black currants if you have good amount of dates in the diet you will have good amount of roughage in the diet and green leafy vegetables sprouts all things all these things are going to add up to the iron intake now hemoglobin is heme which is uh, iron and globin means protein so you have to understand that it's not only iron deficiency you will also have to consume good amount of protein in the diet so only then your hemoglobin molecule will be formed properly okay deficiency of any one of these nutrients is going to cause some problem in future okay and it's not only that it's vitamin b12 folic acid and other vitamins like you know b6 b3 b12 all these things will help in production of the red blood cell so that is also one important thing and we can uh, conscious and mindful eating nutrition educating to the youth nowadays will help us to prevent these hazards it might just seem a very simple problem but in future it does cause a lot of problem for females basically because what happens is anemia consistent lack of uh, nutrients in the diet will ultimately lead to uh very severe anemia now like we see a lot of patients in the hospital and uh, patients with anemia uh, like having hemoglobin of 5 or 4.5 or 6 we see those patients and that is just out of ignorance they don't even realize it only is it comes to the mind only when there is palpitation when they are not able to climb up stairs okay so that then they will realize that there is some problem okay so it's not related to your heart directly but it is because of lack of hemoglobin that is it is going to uh, cause a problem okay so i hope this talk was uh, helpful for all of you and it has enlightened you to some level that a good healthy balanced diet and nutrition is going to help us to take a step forward and help us to prevent ourselves and our family members from a uh, lot of health hazards in the future it is always better to invest in good healthy nutrition although many people think that this is very expensive but i don't think it is more expensive than paying the hospital bills in future so think twice before you put anything in your mouth and this is really going to take you a long way so stay healthy and stay happy and have a good day thank you so much